Hi, this is Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC12 at the Intel booth, and we're here today to talk about Intel parallel development tools. David, now, what are you showing here today? Uh, today, I'm showing a demonstration of Intel Advisor XE. Uh, this just launched about two months ago. Intel Advisor XE helps you take sequential code or code that's only partially parallel and help you identify where you can benefit from parallelism, project potential scalability of it, identify the um, potential data conflicts you may have, and then let you um, model that before you actually implement it into your C, C++, or Fortran code. So this solves a very opportune time with this 2013 version because now you have Xeon Phi, right, with an extra 50 some cores to deal with, right? Oh yes. Okay, so this tool will help me maximize the, the benefit from using that coprocessor with the Intel processor. That's right. We're going to run on the base host system, but you know, we're going from eight cores on your host system to 60 cores on Xeon Phi, so you want to make sure you get the scalability ready, and this helps you get that scalability there. Sounds good. Can we take a look? Sure. Right here, we have Advisor XE open. This is running on Linux, and I'm about to create a new project. So I'm going to create this new project, and I'll start the project, and then I'll add an executable that we're going to analyze. And in this case, we're going to do this IGW research. And I'm going to give it some parameters here to run. We're going to run this in sequential mode. And I'm going to give it a reduced workload so it'll run a little bit faster and we can move along here. Okay, so I've identified our application and I'm giving it some runtime parameters. And I'm going to set that that's good, so that's okay. And up here, this, this here will identify our workflow analysis. Okay, it's doing some kind of analytics now in the background? Not yet. I'm yeah. just showing the survey. So these sure. are the different steps. Oh. So our workflow, we would identify the workflow. Our workflow is to first survey the target. Okay. Then we annotate. And mm. the survey shows us where the tool identified that it believes we can benefit from parallelism. Yeah. Then I add annotations to say, okay, model this region being parallel. Then I say, if this region is parallel, what data conflicts will I have? And then I take out my annotation statements and actually implement it with one of the models, MPI, OpenMP, Intel 3D building blocks, Silk Plus threading, or such. So I'm going to start the survey. Uh, this, this shows our workflow. Yeah. And now I'm going to start the survey and start collecting data. So this is invoking application. This application is collecting data, or, or is modeling data, about flow or raves in the Baltic Sea. And so I have three, three areas display here. Some, kind, some kind of CFD thing going on yeah. there. Yeah. And so it's modeling the waves when we have the interaction, the waves coming against the shore, and the gets shallower, how the waves hit there, and how that can impact structures that are there, and, and model this behavior. Cool. OK. So the survey's done. And this is my, my survey report. And up here, it starts at, at Maine. It shows where I went down through and, and, and started things at. And this, this uh, little arrow here, it shows a loop, so it's identified a loop here. And it identifies that as being a potential place for parallelism. So I click on this one here, I take a look at it, and I see that I've started inside a new function here. Mm. So I can say, well, I don't see the, the, the function right there. Let me take back my survey report. I take a look at the second one. And it shows me the total time. And there's a very diff little difference there, so I'm going to take a look at the second one. And the second implication is this for loop. So a for loop is very easy to say. I recognize a for loop is an ideal candidate for parallelism. I can split the work across this, this region here. Mm. So this is also high. If I look at my survey report, I see that 92.8% of my time is spent below that for loop. So if I thread that for loop, I threaded 92.8% of my parallel runtime. OK, so you know how to attack the problem now. That's right. So I'm going to take it. You see in my code here, I've already got this annotate site begin. I'm going to uncomment those. And I'm going to, or if I hadn't already done that, I would add this section here. Sure. So annotate site begin says, this is where my parallelism begins at. This begins a parallel region. And I'll have at the end of that a site end. That ends my parallel region. And inside I mark the parallel tasks. So here's the parallel region. And here are the tasks inside the parallel region which can be done in parallel. And this will be used for my modeling. 
That is very intelligent. That is cool. It finds that and points it out to you so you can go right in there and not have to search for it. That's, That's right. Awesome. So now I can model it and before I've committed to any particular programming model. And so I've actually, I recompile, I recompile it now and I've already recompiled it for us. So we're going to skip ahead to run the, um, the, the suitability. So the first step was done where I run the survey, which I just showed you. I annotate source, I uncomment those things, or I add the annotations, recompile, and now I'm going to check the suitability. Okay. So this time I'm going to have to make a change. Um, I'm going to change with my program because I, I didn't recompile, so I'm going to change my binary here. So I'm going to change this to one that already has the annotations built into it. IGW Research Add is the binary where I've compiled that already has the annotations built in it. So I so select this of executable, leave the work parameters the same and I can let this run. So I'll let this run, or I can set this okay. And now I'm gonna... It gives me a warning that it's not sure if it knows that this is um, annotated or not. I know it's annotated, so I'm just gonna say continue, let's go. One of the warnings when we do this modeling, it does run a little bit slower. Yeah. So if you look at our runtime here, you're gonna see things are running a little bit slower, but it's not bad. We can still see the dots changing here, yeah. that we're doing our work here. Yeah. So we're about done. And we can look at this and we can zoom in on one of the particular ones here mm. and see the work being done. Finalizing. So now it's collected the data and it's going to give its predictions for us. So here's our suitability report and it shows us that right here for a target of eight, we ran it sequentially, and says if we ran this on eight cores, we would probably get a six point, uh, you know, overall, that region would gain by 6.6. .6, and our overall runtime would gain by about 6.6. .6. It shows us that the area we annotated, we entered at one time. So the parallel region, we entered that parallel region only one time. The number of parallel tasks for that workload, the number of parallel tasks is listed right here. The instances um, was 38. Not had a reduced workload, so we'd normally do more than that. But we were in a short sample. But in that in workload, we had 38 instances. 38 parallel tasks, yes. and it shows me that the average time for each task was up 0.566, the minimum time was 0.07, the maximum time was 1.27. So each iteration is not evenly passed. So we want to do some load balancing and probably some dynamic scheduling for it. Um, we, this shows our, our estimated scalability range on it, and so it's very useful information to, to do it. But now I want to say if I parallelize that, am I going to introduce some race conditions? Ah. So, the next step is to check the check correctness. correctness. That's right. So rather than coding it and getting data races, let's do this model, let's model it first and find out where the data races can occur and do I want to handle this by putting locks around it or do I want to handle it by making private copies in each thread? These are different choices I can make, but before I do that, let's find those issues. All right. So I'm going to choose the collect, check correctness. Okay, so last step is to do that suitability analysis. When that, it takes quite a bit of time to run that and I know we have a short time with your camera and such and your busy schedule. And it gives us a short, it'll give us a summary of the databases it finds. Using that information, we designed the algorithm, we threaded it with threading building blocks, we put the pro proper protection around the database conditions that Advisor XE identified, that cleaned things up. We're safe and ready to go, yep. and now I have the fully parallel version. Uh, we, we changed the annotations to threading building blocks. Okay. And I have the version here, and here's the regular full workload, and I'm going to run this in the sequential mode first. So in our sequential mode, we run this, and up here you can see my average performance is about 1.2, 1.3 points per second as we're navigating through here. So this is our sequential runtime, 1.1, 1.2 points per second. I'm going to stop that and I'm going to switch this to the parallel mode, uh, okay. which we thread with parallel building blocks. And we start this up again. And now you see that we're running about 6.2 points per second. Things move around a lot faster. So we projected about a 6.6 .6 speed up. We got about a 6x 6, 6 speed up running eight cores. And it didn't take you very long. We did this right here on the, wow. It took, you know, the whole thing, if we'd had full time, we could have done this in 30 minutes with the full, well, adding the 30 million blocks may take 45 minutes. Sure, and you but got a 6x speed up six for 6x speed trouble. up, that's right. We go through the suitability, identify it, model it with the annotations, identify race conditions, and then we replace the annotations with the threading building blocks. Wow, well, very and good, Dave. That whole thing could be 45 minutes. Yeah. Well, 
terrific. Well, hey, thanks for sharing that with us today. Thanks for coming by, Rich. You bet.